Bye. You're listening to Swinger University with Ed and Phoebe. Bringing you sexy lessons for sexy fun. Here are your hosts, Ed and Phoebe. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Uh, are we recording? Oh, yeah, we recorded that. Oh. Well, hello, this is Phoebe. And this is Ed. Bringing you another sexy lesson. This time, we decided to discuss the benefits of kissing and why it is so important. We'd like to think of kissing as a dance, an equal partnership where one leads and one follows. But you know what? I think it was best described by Michael Christian as an art and craft. Fun facts about kissing. We'll start with some fun stuff because kissing is all about fun. Yes. 90% of the world's population kisses. Now, is that 90% of people? Population. Uh... Or is this 90% of all creatures Oh, people. People. All right. Just checking. Yeah. Some people don't because of... It's a, it's a cultural thing. Almost a religious thing. I, I didn't dive real deep into it, but it um, has something to do with, you know, your spirit. You, you don't want to kiss a re, like a photograph, right? Mm. Remember how people used to be afraid of photographs because it was steal your spirit. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, in order to preserve... You know, Fascinating. Right? Never heard of that. Yes. But I'm glad I... Don't live in that, that culture. Because I really like kissing. <laughs> <laughs> mm, me too. One of three people kiss with eyes open. Now, I go either way. At mm-hmm. least with kissing. Yeah, me too. Sometimes I like my eyes closed. Sometimes I like to watch. Sometimes I'm kissing someone and looking someplace else, like yeah. the other bed, oh. to see what's going on. Right. So I have my reasons for opening right. my eyes. And part of that was that it's so close that most people can't focus. So the automatic response is to just close the eyes. It's pretty hard for me to see that close now it is <laughs> it's really hard for me to see that close now <laughs> stupid glasses i know <laughs> interestingly enough french kiss or french kissing was introduced into the english vocabulary in 1923 and oddly enough it was actually a an ethnic slur against the french culture because they were overly, overly sexual. sexual oh how terrible how terrible yeah mm-hmm. i know i don't get it but I anyway know. there you go there you go overly sexual french yep lips have one of the thinnest layers of skin on the body with over one million nerve endings. So very thin skin and lots of nerve endings, which means you can feel everything through your lips. Yeah. Which is probably why kissing and suckling and nibbling with your lips feels mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get into the health aspects, I did want to say we're basically calling ourselves out in this episode by, I don't know if that's the right term, we we were not fully understanding why some individuals were not 
great kissers, especially if they had been with their Ah, partner for 20 years or more. And that bothered me uh, when I had said that. And then it bothered me that I couldn't figure out why. And then it dawned on me, well, if you've had the same dance partner for 20 years, how would you know if you didn't research it or try new things an experiment, then you wouldn't know. And some of those, many of those people, they are high school sweethearts. So. I get that. First time in the lifestyle. Same partner since high school. Didn't have a good person to practice with. Oh, but then. (laughs) But what I don't get is you've been in the lifestyle for 20 years. And you still (laughs) haven't had enough practical (laughs) practice to learn a few extra tricks. And and I'm not even talking like grade A, top shelf, quadruple gold star kissing. I'm just talking, what the fuck was that? (laughs) I know. That I think I just got violated. <laughs> that kind of kissing. Like, it's wrong. You, you're you not doing this right. Just stop. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Thankfully, that and experience was fairly And for some reason, we're unique. more forgiving with okay sex than we are with bad kissing. Because I mean, everybody's been practicing this since high school. Like, even virgins kiss. That's true. It's usually the first thing you do. Yes. It's first base. I know. It's it doesn't make any sense. It's drug to me. for all the rest of this stuff. It, it kicks everything off. I guess that's how do you have the fire without the match? It was a bucket of cold ice water. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's okay. get let's get healthy. Let's get healthy. So, kissing does release hormones. It releases all that great stuff: dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, which obviously increases your mood. It reduces stress because it lowers the cortisol. It reduces your blood pressure, dilates your blood vessels, increases blood flow, reduces headaches and cramps. Yes, I said cramps. Increases sexual response. Primes the parasympathetic nervous system. Stimulating your glands. Yeah. Decreases cavities. Okay, this is a little weird, but it increases the saliva, which helps wash away plaque. So, hey, you know. Which is that parasympathetic response. I had to look it up. I had to look up what parasympathetic was. Your salivary glands are part of your parasympathetic system, nervous system. And so kissing kicks off this whole set of chemical reactions in your body. Mm -hmm. Getting everything all juiced up for all kinds of fun stuff. Right. Which is why therapists will say to you... Uh, if you, <clears throat> one of the techniques that I had read about years ago was, uh, you know, a couple goes to therapy, they're they're really disconnected. They haven't had sex in a really really long time. They don't even know where to start because they're so disconnected. Right. And the therapist, one of the exercises is to she he will say, just start kissing. At, but you have to do it for at least, oh, there's a time limit, at least a minute, I think it was. Right. At least 60 seconds for things to start kicking in, for the hormones to start releasing. And then it starts to feel really good. It could feel really awkward at first. If you haven't kissed your partner in three years, it's going to feel really strange to kiss him again. But if you just start and you do it for 60 seconds then you're back in the mojo. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Right? Interestingly enough, one of those glands that is also stimulated are the the mucus glands. And considering that the vagina and lubrication are basically 
another mucous membrane. I know for you, kissing oh. you starts to get all kinds of fluids oh, kicked yeah. off. I get so turned on. It's so great. The other thing that was really interesting, which ties right into this, I was just reading an article, and they were talking about spontaneous sexual stimulation, like that sudden urge to just have sex that's mm-hmm. always in the movies, right? Like, there's no buildup to it. It's just like, all of a sudden, boom, they like... Oh, it kicks in and they just have to have sex. It doesn't work like that. This article was saying that it's a process by which with frequency you have that sexually stimulated feeling happen, right? Your your urge to have sex, the more sex you have, the more sex you want to have. Yes. And so Here's an example of kissing on a regular basis keeps the juices flowing, not only yep. in the relationship, but in your sexual attraction. Right, right. And the more sex... Oh, and I'll talk about this in one of my other episodes. I don't think I've talked about it yet because I'm doing research on several other ones. But they talked about the importance of the vaginal health and having sex well into menopause and the reasons for for that is it keeps the vagina lubricated Mm -hmm. keeps the muscles uh, um, intact keeping them from atrophying right keeps the the vagina from actually shrinking so it which can result in painful sex etc etc right not shrinking in like so like Anything, you know, if you stop walking, stop exercising, eventually your body starts to stiffen up, things start to atrophy, you don't have frequency of... More sex. (laughs) That's what all the experts are saying. Kiss more and have more sex. (laughs) That's right. How are we supposed to do that? This whole social distancing thing. Well, we just have to kiss each other a lot more. Oh, okay. And have more sex. Okay. Like the last few days? Uh, Oh, yes. Exactly. Like the last few days. <laughs> Speaking of the last few days, it burns calories. So you burned kissing, a lot. <laughs> I've been getting my cardio in. I'm yeah, telling you, you that much. <laughs> Eight to ten calories per smooch. Now, you're you're not going to get a habit yeah. burger burned off by kissing. I mean, that's a <laughs> right. lot of kissing and a lot of chapstick. Yes. To keep that amount of kissing going, right. but you know. Yeah. Calorie. It's like it's a step, cal- you know. <laughs> right. You gotta get your ten thousand steps in. You gotta get uh, your. That's what we need. We need a kissing app, an Apple oh. Watch app that uh-huh. will track how many kissing calories you've uh. burned. That's what I want to know. I don't care about steps. Uh. I want to know about pound calories. All right. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh it'll tone your face facial muscles and it actually improves your immunity by exchanging friendly bacteria and increases our ability to fight off harmful bugs it also is a self-esteem booster oh yeah it gives you That's those true. Those hormones that get released, those oxytocin and serotonin and dopamine hormones, make you feel loved and connected. So it boosts your self-esteem. Yes. Not to mention the fact that your partner's making out with you heavily, or because this is a swinging podcast, (laughs) whichever partner you're with, if you're (laughs) kissing somebody else, that's a pretty big boost to your self-esteem. Oh, yeah. Yeah super fun all right let's talk about techniques do we want to tease them a little more and put the techniques last and talk Um, about why we kiss we could we could we could push the technique off just a little yeah we're we're gonna tease you guys Mm. instead of giving you some tricks we're gonna save the tricks for the end tricks so We talked about oxytocin levels a little bit. Uh, Attachments created 
through those to- oxytocin levels, mm-hmm. you're more connected. It is an excellent barometer for sexual compatibility, which is very important for swinging. We often refer to it as the swinging measuring stick. Well, we or at least the, the, the trial run before or the dress rehearsal. Oh, yeah. Dress or rehearsal. The, the main act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It I mean, it's like an interview. It hasn't never failed us. So y'all get your kiss on. Get. If, if you can <laughs> kiss well, we suspect other things will also go very well. <laughs> Not necessarily, <laughs> but it, there's been a pretty strong correlation between the two. And all kinds of animals, mammals, birds do it. Kissing. It's not just people. Yeah. So Ella Fitzgerald song. Beer, birds do it, bees do it, even educated fleas do it. It's true. We're not the only ones. Lots of lots of animals kiss. We are just other kinds of animals. It helps you assess suitability, which you know we already touched on, and it is actually a biochemical thing. So I'm gonna reference another song, Maroon Five song, Animals. Maybe you think that you can hide. I can smell your scent for miles. Just like animals. Animals like animals. Pheromones. Yes. Right? We actually have the ability to identify an evolutionary advantageous partner, according to the professor of immunology at Roehampton University. Mr. Fulvio D'Aquisito. I'm oh, so glad you said that because I know I was going to screw that up. You said that very well. You're Three. very good with languages. Three years of French. I'm a cunning linguist. <laughs> <laughs> Voulez-vous coucher avec moi uh. ce soir? I, I love when you... I, I love... Anyone talking a different language to me, it's just so sexy. I could roll off French limericks and you would be... All right, you need to do that when we're in bed next time. All right. I've got a few limericks. Mm. Just don't say, Yo quiero Taco Bell. (laughs) No, not commercials. (laughs) Dr. Sarah Johns. An expert in human reproduction and evolutionary psychology at the University of Kent states that we have the ability to detect a different immune response in someone else by kissing, therefore making them more attractive. Because coming from an evolutionary standpoint, this is really important since any potential offspring will be better equipped to fight infectious disease and therefore survival of the species. Dun, dun, dun. Hence Maroon 5 sniffing you out. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. It all comes down to biology, biochemistry, this, this constant need to reproduce. Yeah. You don't have to produce offspring, but you should try. I never knew that we had that ability to detect someone else's immunity. She stated that basically our olfactory sense of smell was shit. But kissing, we could taste someone's immune strength Hmm. or response. Fascinating. And that was... If it was compatible or attractive, and however that all happens in I the would back love of our, to know. in our monkey brain way back, there. 
right? I would love to know what that study looked like uh, oh. and when the next study <laughs> is going to be conducted because like. I volunteer as <laughs> All right, we're... The last one you have down here is a, a behavior oh. that's transferred from being an infant. And I suspect that has to do with breastfeeding and kind of like the oral stimulation yep. that we're all kind of used to. Yeah. I was breastfed. Um, I still love breasts. <laughs> Clearly there's a correlation. Must be. <laughs> I love breasts too. See? I'm that's the answer. Who doesn't love a big, big, nice booby? Titties are the answer to the entire... I know. ...problem right there. <sighs> They're okay. always the answer. Love is the answer? No, titties. Titties are the answer? Yes. You had made a really fun reference earlier to... Oh, kissing? Kissing and... Unleashing all kinds of things? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It, for me, it's more than just the oxytocin <laughs> and the hormones. <laughs> Kissing makes me want to release my pants. <laughs> Every single time. Every single time. I know. Uh, Every time. It's 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 magic. It, it's magic. They just boop, fall right they off. Just fall right off. Bam. Yeah. Or I just wear the kilt and then I don't even have to take them off. I know. <laughs> just raise the kilt. <laughs> All right, everyone. Techniques. Y'all want to know some techniques. These are some fun techniques. These are fun. So these are things to try. So get yeah. out your notepad. Yeah. Get your pencil out. Listen we're up. Gonna, we're going to take notes. Mm -hmm. First technique. Yep. Lip lining. Mm -hmm. Trace the the tip of your tongue around the curve of lips especially the thin skin in the corners mm -hmm. so do some lip laps with your tongue <laughs> lip laps i like it yeah i i like to lip lap something else with my lips there you go cuz it feels really good <laughs> It does feel mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Back to kissing. Uh, gentle twirl. Slide the tongue inside and twirl it around slowly, allowing lips to passionately engulf your partner's lips. Men, of course tend to prefer deeper, wetter kissing. I don't know why I said, of course. I like it the same. Oh, I like it deep and wet. But you do. I have noticed that. Oh. Mm-hmm. So many ways do I like it. <laughs> deep. And you'll start kissing me deep and wet, which turns me on. And then mm. I start kissing you deep and wet. Mm. So it's like that dance. We'll take a short recess and pause this. You won't notice because I'll edit this out, but we're, we're going to take a little break. All and right. With the energy kiss. Uh-huh. Rest your tongue inside your partner's mouth without moving while pressing your lips passionately into your lover's lips. And breathe through your nose. So this is kind of a tantric kiss. Uh -huh. Very little movement. Right. Just closeness and pressing. We kind of do that when we're having sex. It's like this mouth connection yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, Almost like a kiss, but everything's Multi-connected kind of <laughs> penetrative kissing and other things yes mm. sweet spot the space between your upper lips and teeth it's very sensitive it's basically like the frenulum of the penis slide your tongue inside and twirl it teasing around the shallow space 
between your upper lips and teeth. Then move on to some deep French kissing. This, this is the running your hands up under the bra <laughs> style of kissing, <laughs> right? This is, this is feeling around before you get to the real thing. I love your, your visual over there. Oh, I'm picturing the whole thing. <laughs> like I, mm. Okay, mm. this, this next one, this isn't a, oh, sorry. This is a commentary on me right now and this whole <laughs> COVID not doing enough like personal grooming thing. I see <laughs> why Phoebe threw this in here. This is, <sighs> this is her. This is passive aggressive. Honey. I'm telling you right now. No, it's not. Naked uh, lips. Naked lips. I do I do love my naked. <laughs> Try kissing with no facial hair. Now, I go between shaving and mm -hmm. and growing a bit of a, a mustache mm -hmm. um, goatee kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But and and I feel this too, and that's kissing with having a mustache. It's it's not as good. Mm -hmm. I can't get in there. I feel like there's something... In the way. There's like a caterpillar stuck between us. Yeah. And I... In a couple different ways, I prefer to be shaved because right. I can get into it more. Right. And I'm not talking about kissing. Well, <laughs> I am kissing. I'm just not talking about lips. I mean... <laughs> I am talking about lips. Wait a second. Wait. It's better if it's trimmed close to the skin, away from the lip. However, even with that little bit of a layer, you don't get that like skin on skin contact. Like there's always something kind of in the way. Right. Unless you shave your mustache like Hitler or who is it? With a super, who wears a super tiny little thin stripe above. The bad guy. Yeah. The villain. The villain. Mm -hmm. Except and for the, the handlebar old... mustache guy. And then, right. you know. Right. We, I, I mean, I like facial hair. I, I like do. the look of it. I do. I do too. But it kind of gets in the way. Yeah. And if you're going to have facial hair, trim it. Yes. You can actually trim it above the lip so that it's without more looking out too of the way. strange. Yeah. yeah, right. But even though it's above the lip without looking strange, it, it's still in the way. But it's better. That's because we use our entire faces when we are kissing, honey. <laughs> no. It's not just lips. I mean, we are like deep into it. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah that that was true the other day. Yeah, if you had, I was I rubbed my whole, whole face, face in it. I think you oh, had yeah, a. Yeah, but we're talking about kissing, so I think we straight facial. off topic again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yes, it's still kissing. Yes, 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 yes. So I, I mean, I, I like a little hair. I do. But, I like a little hair too. But I, <laughs> I do prefer a naked lip. Just like the ladies, a little trimmed, yeah, well manicured, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. But try shaving it too. <laughs> At least in the the active areas. Uh, but what's fun about going from a mustache to no mustache or beard to no beard, it's kind of like uh, ladies when you've got long nails and you <laughs> you can't have nails anymore because of COVID and you're and you're like, "Oh my god, I can feel my the tips of my fingers. Holy crap." So there's all those sensory nerves on that skin that you couldn't feel before. You've Why? Because your nails were too. You've got covering. more skin in yeah, contact. Exactly. 
So it's fun. I will periodically, even before I had big nails, um, I'd grow out my natural nails and then I'd cut them back. And I always loved that because I was like, ooh, new I sensation. Can, I, can, I can feel ah. things. Mm, touchy yeah. feely. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. I like it. Okay, well, Ed, oh my goodness. Oh, we've got some great, a great reference for you. So I was doing the research and I came across this guy, William Kane, which I talked about earlier. He wrote a book called The Art of Kissing. Apparently his life changed overnight. What? And he wrote this in 1991. And I was like. It was a long time ago. Right? And Even I was like, for me. Yeah. And and so what's fascinating to me is I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, kissing. Everyone knows how to kiss. La, 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 la. Apparently no, not. Apparently not. He writes this book. He's an English professor, yada, yada, yada. He decides to write this book. He had no idea. Life changes overnight. He's speaking Overnight of, success. Yeah. Speaking across country at all the colleges. Then he moves on to TV, radio, around the world to help people kiss more than a hundred radio and tv programs and a spokesperson for nivea listerine crest others you can listen to his interview on npr it's a little five minute snippet it'll be worth your time he also um what's his his other name he goes by william kane the art of kissing is by william kane but he's yep. that's his pen name but ah. he's Michael Christian. Um, so it's fascinating. It was fascinating to me to learn about him and the fact that his book took off because so many people were so interested in learning in learning how, how to, to kiss. kiss. And I, it floored me. I had I had no idea. I take it for granted. I I do too. Apparently. I was either practicing for a long time or it was a natural or whatever, but it it's, I've never had any complaints. Of course, every guy that ever utters those words <laughs> is probably not that good in bed, but I've gotten compliments uh -huh. about my ability to kiss, uh -huh. but yeah, we've experienced enough mishaps i'll use that word to know that this book is needed by a lot of people <laughs> just carry a few around with us and pass them out for free <laughs> we'll we'll carry it in our go bag tonight Ooh. is a no but here you go <laughs> study up Give us a call after you've read the book and practiced. And... What does J Lo said? What's what's their sec on the world of dance when they they're like they they don't get a yes but they get a call back. Call back. Oh, it's a call back. Here's a book. It's not a hard no. It's a call back. <laughs> Do some homework, little research, little field study. Yeah. Some, yeah. Some practical hands on. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so fun. This episode was fun. Kiss so, is a fun thing. Yeah. I'll put his information in the references and you can go It'll listen. be in the show notes for yes, sure. Yes, yes. Fascinating guy. I actually should get his book. I haven't read it. I have not either. I know. I need to. I think I will. All right. All right. So... Do what feels good. Enjoy it. Pick up techniques from others. Maybe use it as a gauge for how good your interaction will be with your new play partner. The important thing is to feel and listen and learn from the cues that your partner is giving you. This goes way beyond kissing. Yeah. Look at what they're doing, giving you nonverbal signals. Right. If you're kissing right, they're going to respond. respond in a really good way. If they're pulling back, 
Well then. Or wincing and crying in pain. <laughs> Try something else. Just do it gently. Be observant. Ask questions. It's not offensive to say, do you like this? Mm. Do you How like about this? that? You know? Most people are honest. And if they're and if they can't say, a woman will always go. Like if a woman doesn't want to say that she doesn't like it to to protect the man's feelings and if he asks her and she goes, mm, then you know, that's probably not the best. But most likely she will verbalize if she really likes it. Do In, you like If this? she can verbalize. D- d- true. Yeah, true. There's been a lot of that in the last couple yeah, of days too. Yeah, True. Sounds help. Mm. Good sounds help. I've been demanding that you tell me. I know. I know. I love that. I just never know exactly what you want to hear. Oh, you know exactly (laughs) what I want to hear. And on that note, go out and kiss some people. Yes. Get, Get good at kissing. Yes. Do some practice. You're isolated. You're at home. You got nothing better to do, but kiss each other absolutely well and other things but hey it's practice time ding ding thanks for listening before you turn off our podcast to take care of all the vanilla things pulling you away please reach out and give us a review i am the first to admit that it's much easier to give a five-star rating which we appreciate but if you could take 43 seconds to type a review We would love it. If you want to share a personal story, ask us questions, or share your comments, you can contact us at swingeruniversity at gmail.com. Check us out at swingeruniversity.com, where you can find links to our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Thank you so much for listening to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment podcast.